counter, off with the heads! To start off this Red Queen transformation, I applied a bald cap and covered my eyebrows. There will be videos linked below on how to make bald caps, how to apply them, as well as how to cover your brows. You're welcome. The key to my complexion is a combination of white Pax paint and white super color from Krylon. Using a makeup sponge, I stippled the Pax paint onto the bald cap and also onto my eyebrows. And Pax Paint, for all of my loyal subjects, is a 50-50 mixture of Prosade and acrylic paint. It's used primarily to paint latex pieces, along with rubber mask grease paint. Otherwise, latex will suck all the color out of any other makeups. Don't you hate it when your head itches underneath a bald cap? I know I do. Moving on to any of the other areas of flesh that are remaining, I applied Super Color from Krylon using a makeup wedge. And it looks as though I made some quite silly faces during this application. And this is the face I make whenever I realize I have to paint my ears. Because honestly, painting your ears is less than appealing. Try it, and you'll see what I mean. With a generous portion of powder of the baby, I set my makeup. I applied this powder everywhere there was white. At this point, you should resemble he who must not be named. The Vada Kedavra, bitches. The eye makeup for the queen is very simple, but you absolutely must get the shape right. I started by mapping out the shape with the blue eyeshadow from Make Forever. This is the shade S208. Next I used an aqua cream from Make Forever in 25 to fill in those shapes. This icy blue shade is the perfect colour to match my cold, dark soul. I then patted the blue eyeshadow on top of the aqua cream to set it in place and to mattify the finish. One eye down, one more to go, my minions. With a little black eyeliner, I defined my eyes, drawing in a small wing. Then I used my eyelash torture device to curl my lashes and after which I applied the blackest mascara I could find from Makeup Forever. To my waterline I applied a white eyeliner from OCC Cosmetics and then underneath my eyes I drew in another line with black eyeliner to create more definition. I want all of my loyal subjects to see my eyes so it's important to add definition. Next, I applied two sets of false lashes, one set to the bottom and another set to the top. Again, I really must emphasize my eyes, especially since I'll be sentencing my minions to be beheaded. With the same black eyeliner I previously used, I drew in my eyebrows, and I'm pretty sure Jean Harlow would be super jealous of these. My face was reading a bit flat with all of this white makeup, so I added contour. I applied a grey eyeshadow underneath my cheekbones and to my temples. And this is the part where you all say, yes, queen, slay. I like to save the final steps of my face till last, so I moved on to my clothing. I started by outlining the shape of my gown with a white eyeliner. I drew in the neck first, then I added the collar. I then drew in the top of the dress and the poofy sleeves. You are definitely not a queen unless you have poofy sleeves. And I also drew in the area where I will be beheaded.
I filled in all the areas I needed white with the Krylon Super Color and set it with Powder of the Baby. Next I mixed a royal blue and a black face paint together to create a navy blue for my dress. Then I applied it to all of the areas of my dress, including the poofy sleeves. I then applied a white face paint to define the color. With a black eyeshadow and an angled brush I began to define the color even further. I shaded underneath the color to make it appear more three-dimensional. Then I defined the edges of the color and shaded in the areas that needed to recede, like where the neck meets the collar. There would be a shadow there. Next I added stripes to the bodice of the dress using the black eyeshadow again. This makes it appear as though the fabric is folded. Since I am royalty, my gown would naturally be dripping in gold and jewels. So with the gold face paint, I drew in some ornamentation. It's best to look at a picture of the Red Queen to get a general idea of the jewels that adorn her gown. I painted on a line of gold circles and then with the red face paint filled in the circles. Sorry if this part is out of frame. Shortly after discovering my cameraman's mistake, I had him beheaded. Next, I added a line of pearls to the top of the bodice. To make the fabric of the gown pop, I added white highlights using a white eyeshadow. For my almost headless look, I filled in a red oval at the base of my neck. And I left an oval open in the center, which I then filled in with white face paint. I shaded the inside of my red neck stump with a bit of black eyeshadow. I also shaded directly behind the neck stump. Next, with the white face paint, I stippled in a few highlights to the stump to make it look extra juicy and wet. The dangly hanging neck bits were all painted on using a white face paint. And to further the decapitation illusion, I filled any remaining skin with a black face paint and shaded directly behind the white dangly neck bits. I also trailed the black eyeshadow down the white neck to make it look as though the neck is being stretched. I finished any other shading and highlighting of the gown that I missed and moved on to the arms. I painted on red ruffles underneath the poofy sleeves. Then I shaded those and painted on the remaining arms with a navy face paint. To really finish off the illusion, I painted the rest of my skin with black face paint, making sure it was opaque as I could possibly make it. Moving back up to finish the face, I added a mark of beauty to the top of my cheek using a black eyeliner. Then I outlined my heart-shaped lips with a red lip liner. And you want to take your time drawing in this shape, as it is quite key to this look. And finally, I added a red lipstick on top of the lip liner, using a lip brush for precision. The makeup is complete, and now comes the hair. This wig is from Penny Lane Wigs on Etsy. I will link the shop below. They have all sorts of beautiful pieces from princess wigs to celebrity wigs like Elvis and Marilyn Monroe. And this hair is of the highest quality. Nothing less for this queen. Well, my minions, we have reached the final steps of my transformation. Feel free to start rejoicing in my beauty. And you can do that by giving this video a thumbs up and by subscribing to my channel. I upload new videos every Thursday. Also make sure to check out the rest of the Wonderland series, including a very, very catty Alice and an even madder Mad Hatter. Thanks so much for watching my loyal subjects and I'll see you next Thursday.